I am Anthony from Hackersnet, and on Sunday, June 28th, 2020, Masako X participated in a charity question and answer live stream with me. If you do not know who Masako X is, he is a voice actor best known as a member of the Team Four Star YouTube channel. He currently hosts his own YouTube channel, Masako Extreme, where he creates stories based upon the Dragon Ball franchise. What you are about to see is part of the Q&A live stream. Due to a technological issue, Masako X was unable to participate via webcam, but was able to participate via voice chat. In advance, thanks for watching, and please remember to like and subscribe. With me today is uh, Masako X. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, I'm doing all right. Thanks, yeah, mate. How are you doing? So, uh, so because you have a new puppy, you're not actually on site. So you're doing it from your laptop. Yeah, I'm And how yeah, is I'm the new puppy going? Uh, she's doing all right, relatively. Um, she's still got a long way to go, really. That's why, unfortunately, I'm having to do this relatively remotely. And unfortunately, my wife is uh, busy playing with my, uh, our nephews. Like, yeah, so she's distracted for the next couple of hours. So. I'm basically out near the near the garden, kind of just checking out on the puppy, just make sure she doesn't go too far. Yeah. So, um, as we've been discussing on Discord, I have a cat who is a, just a pain in the butt, and I, I think I realized it's not because we had a discussion about maybe it's because I'm home so much because of the pandemic. I think it's because my little brother moved out. It's, it's just me, so I'm like the only person who gives him any attention. I think yeah, that's why. Yeah, of course. I think my little brother was absorbing it all. So now that he's not here, it's me. Yes, yes, of course. Yes. Yeah, no, but it's one thing that we've noticed actually, because uh, my in-laws were looking after her because I had to go to a funeral on Friday. And one thing that they noted is that whenever they like just had a hug or anything like that, our puppy Arthur would get very, very shouty about it. Like as in like, hey, knock it off. Like getting quite jealous. So that's one thing that we didn't realize, and it's one thing you don't really notice until someone else points that out to you. So we've been basically just keeping an eye on that. So at the moment, we're trying to make her a bit more independent, like she can entertain herself. But right now, it's proving to be a little bit difficult because normally I could just leave her, leave her in the garden and just like just check up on her and the cameras every now and again, just make sure she's not in trouble. She is very much in trouble. <laughs> But yeah, she's she's doing relatively all right. She's a bit sleepy because again, we were just out with the in-laws, so yeah, basically I'm just checking out on her. So she should be relatively sleepy. But right now, oh no, no, she's chasing some pigeons. <laughs> yep, yep. No, she's her eyesight's improving now because she's about nearly eleven weeks old. So she's now actually able to see things a bit more clearly. So she's now got her eyes on about like two pigeons. Oh, oh. No, no, she didn't get it. <laughs> get a play-by-play. -play. Yeah, no, no, no. It's, unfortunately, I've got a good view of, like, 90% of the garden. But typically, she'll be in that 10% I can't quite see. Because she's she's a bit of a smarty pants like that. So, she's going to try and be a bit of a smart addict. Okay, see, now, I wanted a puppy. We used to have dogs. Uh, but now that I have, I have Simon just being very needy, I was I, I, had, I had sent a message, and I thought it was funny. Could we use a Pokemon link to trade our pets? I t yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah the, advanced, the advanced link cable. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. It's, it's, as in, like, I, I, it's like I, I'm not really a dog person, or at least I wasn't. Uh, but basically, Arthur, who is a bearded collie, for those people who might not know, basically she's really, really good. She's very smart, sometimes too smart for her own good. So she's very much like, you know, yeah, you know, if you're like training her, because we do clicker training. So basically, yeah, you, know, you train her something, and then when you do it a few times, she immediately starts doing it. So it's like, yeah, am I doing it right? And I'm like, you're not going to get the treat until I tell you to. So, you know, don't don't just assume. Don't don't just assume I'm going to give you the treat because you do it without me telling you. So you kind of have to like say, no, get back down, try that again when I tell you to. Because we're planning eventually on showing her at like uh, dog events. But again, yeah, this is like not for several months or something like that because you know she's a puppy; she needs to play. And oh, I love very, it! Very... So, uh, um, somebody posted the the mayor of West City is a dog person. Well, there you go. Exactly, like King King Furry. Yeah, King Furry is the king of Earth, pretty much. 
Yeah. King um, of Planet Earth, it's, um, it's King Furry. So basically, King Furry is the dog. And in Dragon Ball the Kakarot, it's actually been, um, there's actually been some information put about that in regards to why there are animal people there and why there aren't any anymore. See, I was about to mention that it was like, uh, I think somewhere in the game it said that they took some type of formula or whatever because it was all the rage, it was a fad, and then now they're stuck yeah, that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, no, that's, no, no, it was more along the lines, of, yeah, that's, that's true, but it was more along the lines of like, it was there. It was called uh, Beast Men. So that's what they're referring right. to. Is this Beast Men craze that loads of people? They would take this formula and they become Beast Men based on their personality. And the fact was, though, is that they thought, oh, this is going to be something that changes everything. But it turned out just to be a fad. And actually, that explains why it's not anymore. <laughs> like, yeah, as in, like there aren't that many. So they either they either die out or they just don't get seen that much. So that probably explains why you don't see them in Super. Because in Super, they, they don't exist. It's just people. So ha you so uh, then you have played uh, Kakarot. Yes, um, I did dabble in it on a live stream, but at the moment, it, yeah, it is it does get a little bit repetitive. So I didn't want to kind of bother my audience with like you know just seeing the same thing over and over again. But the way I see it is that Kakarot is it's a good thing that it does exist because it is like a Dragon Ball encyclopedia. So. You know, you have the Daizenshu, which is like the the classic Bibles of Dragon Ball, whereas in like it has all the information and all the interviews from Toriyama back in the 90s. And it's gospel. That's what we use for our discussions quite frequently. But Kakarot is like a sort of updated version with some, you know, clarification on certain things like the Beastman thing, which is actually pretty interesting. So it's almost like you want to play it to get through like to find out stuff about various like things within the dragon world because you gotta get that because we get that vibe now with toriyama in his 60s that he's actually instead of doing the fast and loose approach that he's been doing for pretty much most of his career it's actually quite being reflective and actually being very considered with his responses because before if you look at any of the interviews within daizenchu it's very clear that because Toriyama is not a very people person. He's very insular. He's very much of a recluse. He doesn't like talking to people. So you get that sometimes, like for example, in one interview, he asked, um, he was asked, why does Krillin not have a nose? He basically, well, he's basically an earthworm because he breathes through his skin. I mean, he has a mouth. He's just, you just don't always see him with his mouth open. <sighs> Exactly, he's not a mouth breather or anything like that. He doesn't, he doesn't breathe through his mouth. Basically, he breathes through his skins. So therefore, it's like you think, oh, so that, does that does that make him an earthworm or something like that? But that's just kind of the answers that Toriyama was giving back in the 90s because he was just like, yeah, I don't want to talk to you. And nowadays, you kind of realize in Japan, sometimes these quote unquote interviews aren't necessarily actually in person. Most of the time, they are like uh, via correspondence, like either by email or by the phone, and they're made and they're written in a way to make it sa seem like they are actually in the same room. Like with the, some of the interviews with Toyotaro and Toriyama in the super manga. So there's like a con sometimes they have Toriyama and Toyotaro in conversation, but they're not actually in the same room. Yeah, okay. No, because I was like, well, then we go back to maybe Krillin... Well, obviously Krillin didn't do the beast thing, uh, but maybe he's a descendant of somebody who did. Well, the thing is that, is that you know, the, the, the Earth world in, in the Dragon world is not necessarily... Yeah, for the most part, it's fairly clear-cut, like, it's our world, but sometimes there are things that are different. I mean, given the fact that there are dinosaurs that roam the, roam the Earth. And they make a they make a mean dinosaur steak that as go on is very partial to. Um, but it's it's it is quite different, but at the same not so. Because I was actually um, listening to a discussion from Kyo Yaju on YouTube. You know, she's only got like a couple of thousand subscribers, but in a way that that doesn't really matter at all because what she was saying. Because I got like this um, tip off from Twitter. Basically, uh, this chat was uh, this person was really really getting quite down on the concept that TFS would do saying that you know the whole Goku's a bad parent or anything like that and I admit that I was encouraging that quite a lot in my discussions but Kairi Yaju was able to make it clear that well 
Toriyama is like seeing like you know Goku's thing is in a different manner in a bit different perspective and because the whole thing bully concept that, that TFS would do um, uh, does don't you in that Toriyama was very much like saying that Goku treats his family like companions rather than actual family whereas Vegeta is very beholden to the concept of the family and in a way it was a very fascinating discussion and just showing that in a way you know Goku is actually not a bad father it's just like yeah it's different horses for courses like different cultures and different backgrounds and it does make very much sense because for a Saiyan Goku is not that bad a father because given the fact that well he's there for a start and he does try it's just does something that doesn't come naturally to him oh okay so because I well I swear I saw we were talking uh, you had a discussion about uh, how Goku's pretty much very uninformed and yes. uh, yeah so like um, he didn't know that he committed to uh, Chi Chi when they were little he didn't understand the concept uh, he doesn't kiss his wife um, I, I feel like Grandpa well, Gohan didn't have the talk with him well the, the way I see it is that with Dragon Ball Super you gotta take that with a pinch of salt because that whole thing was that Goku was really written weirdly in that series like because if you feel like the, dra the late Dragon Ball Z Goku and Dragon Ball Super Goku they don't feel like the same person because Granted, Totally Not Mark does a very good discussion about Goku having a flat character arc, and that's okay. Because Goku's not the main focus of the story, in terms of character development. Because in a way, you don't want him to develop, because, you know, it's an archetypal, iconic sort of guy. But, you feel that the Dragon Ball Z Goku, uh, especially in the Boo Saga, is a guy who, again, is carefree, very, very flat, easygoing, but at the same time, when in a crisis, you can depend on him. But in Super, he's written like an idiot. Like, he is written very brashly, very self-centered. And it's also something really like, oh, I don't know. He just, like, is written for comedy relief rather than being, like, the strong leader, like, of the, of the dragon team. He's just there because, like, in the Goku Black arc, it's like, oh, no, I forgot the talisman. Whoopsie-doo. Like, you just feel like he'd, he forgets things just for the sake of plot. It just doesn't feel right. But I suppose, really, it's just, it's just that it's that whole connection. But it's going back to the fact that Goku is a very loyal person to people that he cares about. And he is very much a person of honor. And that's something Gohan did teach him. As in, if you make a promise, you need to keep it. And... You know, Chi Chi said, you you made a promise to me to marry me. And he was like, well, I don't, I'm not sure really what that means, but a promise is a promise. So it's like, I was confused, but I did promise. So therefore, I will honor it. So Goku is very respectful. And Gohan did teach him to be nice to girls. That was one thing that Gohan was able to teach him. But un until, unfortunately, it was cut short by the fact he got squished by Goku, obviously. Yeah, um, so on, on Twitch, uh, dog, 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 seven, seven, seven says, Oh, Grandpa Gohan had the talk. It just didn't go too well. Well, the thing, yeah, they, well, the thing is, though, is that you, we're not quite sure when exactly Grandpa Gohan got squished. Like, what age? Because we first meet Goku in Dragon Ball around about the age when he's like 12. So we know that from like, the age of 12, he was, you know, he was an orphan. Living, living in the wild, but that in of itself is actually a really interesting topic because a lot of people like just say that old oh, Goku's dumb, he's he's stupid, he's an idiot. Well, the, yes, in the in the concept that most we most assume, because this is a really interesting one. I did do a discussion about this. Is asking is Goku smart? And you can say yes, he is because. There is an interesting theory, and I do talk about this in the video. There are seven ways of, of, of quantifying intelligence. And one of them, and that, this is the one that we most use as a barometer for intelligence, is mathematical intelligence. So basically, in terms of problem solving and all this kind of stuff, using mathematics and, you know, simple puzzles. And unfortunately, Goku is below average in this because, you know, 
Fagans aren't really meant to be mathematicians, unless you believe in the pioneer dub, where it's like, your father was an average fighter, Kakarot, but he was a brilliant scientist. As in, like, the old Pioneer Double Vegeta would say. But, in terms of, like, there are at least three different intelligence quotients that, you know, Goku is a genius. Like, kinetic intelligence, natural intelligence, you know, and, uh, just, and survivalist. As in, like, you know, kinetic, as in, obviously, he is incredibly strong. Na you know, natural, as in being able to adapt to the wild, and also being a survivor. So, again, you need to watch the video to get the full lowdown on it, but essentially, three out of the seven main intelligence quotients that there are, in theory, Goku is an absolute genius. It's just, unfortunately, the way we tend to define a, uh, a, a genius in modern society, Goku does fall short in. Okay, so anybody who wants to ask uh, Maseko, X, uh, Maseko X a question... Oh, by the way, I have been criticizing how I pronounce Maseko X. Am I doing it wrong? It's, it's more Masako X. Masako, oh. Um, now, I'm not starting to wonder... It's no, because it's okay. Not... It's Masako X. Yes. Uh, see, but I say Maseko, Maseko but I think it's because... Is... That's the English pronunciation, right? Yeah, well, that's the thing. I don't... I don't... I'm not. I'm not. I'm not particularly fussy about that. I'm not going to go like, oh, well, you actually pronounced it incorrectly, sir. It is actually a dis. I'm like, if you want to pronounce it that way, that's fine. To be honest, I'm. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not much of a pedant in that sense. Yeah, because uh, because remember we did the interview and one of the comments was he doesn't even pronounce his name right. And I'm like, how do you pronounce it? I, it's the emphasis, like um. What was it, Naruto or Naruto or like um, people criticize me on that? And I'm like, but I'm, I'm saying it the way that I heard in the American version of the cartoons, so I assume I'm correct. But uh, well, that's the thing, really. It's just that there are different definitions. Sometimes it can be very tricky to like pinpoint the correct pronunciation because there's like three for Naruto in of itself, like. Yeah, if you want to say it absolutely correct, correctly based on the Japanese, it's Naruto. Uh, that, so basically, if you want to say it like that, that is the most accurate. If you want to say Naruto, that is fully acceptable. Naruto is the most commonly known one. But so long as you don't say Naruto, because it's like, that's Naruto as in the donuts. And it's like, Naruto is a form of bread. What? No? That, that that that's not right so it, that's the thing there there are at least three acceptable ways of saying naruto but naruto that one is like the most you know tolerable most people are that yeah that's fine but if you want to be like it's like um oh yeah for goku goku is the most well known but if you want to say goku as in it's like it's more of the emphasis on the ku rather than the go but Goku, that's just well known. That's fine. And it's like with the whole Saiyan Saiyan thing. Because if you hear in the in the Japanese sub, it's Saiyajin. So it's meant to be Saiyan. But, you know, most people know it as Saiyan. So to say it as Saiyan is Yeah, it's fine. It's absolutely acceptable. So that, that that's the thing. So in terms of people the way the dialect said, it's just more about the person who is actually the thing, but if people say Masako or Maseko, I'm like not that bothered. I've had people say Master Cox. What? Yeah, no, Master Cox is one, and I don't get uppity about that because, to be fair, a lot of like social media pl platforms don't allow me to actually like capitalize and do uppercase and lowercase. So, oh, for yeah, like enunciating, that... okay. Yeah, so unfortunately, that I can't some on some platforms I can't do uppercase or lowercase. So it does mean, unfortunately, it does make things a little bit tricky when you're actually spelling out. So you go M A S A K O X. Oh, what, like Master Cox? No. Massive Cox? No. That's not how you say it. Cheeky, you don't don't be naughty. It's like you said it, not me. So. Okay, so um, dog 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 seven 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 has a question for you. Uh, and yeah. I'm gonna read the whole thing. There's a question, and then it kind of goes into a side note. He says. M uh, um, I want to say Masako. 
Yeah, that, that's fine. Well, w w which one did you prefer? I, I've. Ma I, I, I'm saying I don't have a particular. Okay, because we went Mark through the. Um, <laughs> we went through the Naruto thing, and I totally your your name just fell out my other side. He's just like. That's okay, but Masako is the most is okay. the most typical one. Okay, so he goes Masako. Uh, what next in voice acting? Says side note, I love the line you gave Goku during the cell fight during a bridge about how Cell would never pass that up because I wouldn't. I love your work through the series. Uh, although, <laughs> speaking of favorite lines, mine was uh, I pay my taxes like one leg at a time, like everyone else. Well, anyway, back oh, to Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. It's a... Oh, yeah, no, of course. Um, so what's next in what voice acting? Again? What was the question again? What's next in voice acting? Oh, um, well, hard to say, really. Because you're right doing R&R. &R. Yes, um, but that's, that's more of a project. That's more of, like... Because one of these days, I really want to do, like, an original project. Like, an original story. An original IP. But I feel like with R and R, that's like a good interim project. Like it's set in a Dragon Ball world, which people are familiar with, but it uses original scenarios and a couple of original characters. So it's like a mix of the two. So it's just to kind of get people used to the style that myself and my co-writer Haverock, yeah, are writing styles to get people used to it and to see whether people respond well to it. And fortunately, it, um, people are, do respond well. And in our what if stories, that's a similar thing too. So, like, there's a what if that I do called What If Freezer Turned Good. And that's basically like taking in like the likes of Cowboy Bebop and Outlaw Star, and then putting in Freezer about whether he might turn good. And most people go, well, wait a minute, Freezer can't turn good, he's not good. And you think, well, you're absolutely correct there, that's very true. But, you need to find a way, if you would ever turn good, what is the most likely scenario and setting and circumstances that would allow that to happen? So, for instance, again, you can take a listen to this on the Up on the Lookout podcast that I have on various podcasting platforms or on my YouTube channel. But suffice to say is that the only way that Frieza could ever hope to go towards the good side, not go fully to it, is for him to actually have everything that he knows taken away from him. As in, like, he needs to basically be stripped of his title, have nothing left, and he would have to start anew. No rosé wine for him. Either. So, that you need to have that re-adventure of him being a drifter, and him eventually trying to piece everything back together. Thank you for checking out our content. Before you leave, please remember to click like, and then subscribe. If you want to receive notifications, do not forget to enable them by clicking on the bell. Then afterwards, check out our social media at Hasledge.net and our website at hasledge.net.